And we're going to talk about the devil's kids tonight. It's exactly what Jesus Christ called them. He said, ye are of your father the devil. Look with me. We're going to start at verse number 42. We're going to read this whole thing, and then we're going to take it verse by verse like we usually do. Um, verse number 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? They accused Jesus of having a devil. <laughs> Verse 49, Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to come worship. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to come and stand and preach, thus saith the word of God. Lord, I pray that you would help me to do just that. Lord, I can't do this without you. I need your help. I need a touch from you. And I ask you, Lord, right now to come down and be with us. I ask you, Lord, to come down and help me to preach, to do what you've called me to do. These things we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you look with me again, we're going to read verses 42 through 47, then I give you the introduction tonight. I want to, you say, well, that's just too much. It's never too much reading of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Here we've got Jesus preaching and teaching in the temple to a fairly large crowd once again. And guess what he's claiming to be? God. All through the book of John, it's a pattern. He's claiming that he's God. He said he was God when he said he was the Son. He said he was God when he said he was the bread of life. He said he was God when he, when he was talking to uh, Nicodemus. All through the book of John, he's claiming to be God. And they can't handle that. When he starts saying, I'm God, just like the world today, if you talk to them, as I've said many times before, because it's in our context of Scripture, they don't mind you talking about angels. Uh, they don't mind you talking about uh, Muhammad. They don't mind you talking about Buddha. And they don't mind you talking about all these other things. They don't even mind you talking about God. But when you say that Jesus Christ was God, that's when they begin to have a problem. You can't even pray in the name of Jesus. You don't see any politicians doing that. It's always in the name of the Father. In the name of the Holy Father. In the name of God. It's never in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way we ought to pray. That's the way we ought to end our prayers. Because He was God. 
At the beginning of chapter 8, he said that he was the light of the world, comparing himself to the sun, the source of life, the center of everything, as well as God is the source of life and the center of everything in our lives. Amen? Just like the other time that Jesus claimed to be God in the book of John, the Pharisees got angry because they thought he was blaspheming. That's blasphemy, brother. And let me tell you this. If somebody today were to come before me and stand and tell me that they were God in the flesh, I'd say they were blaspheming, just like the Pharisees said that Jesus was. Could you imagine having Jesus standing right in front of you and not believing it was him? It's amazing, ain't it? They did exactly what we would do. Him standing in front of us is no different. So he goes to tell them if they don't believe that he is God, they're going to die in their sins, as we learned last week. The worst place to die is in your sins. Amen. What's the reaction to that? As always, they got mad. Who wants to be told that they're a sinner on their way to hell? Absolutely nobody. But it's the truth, amen. amen. Of course, that enraged them even more when he said that he was going to preach against their sin, that they were going to die in their sins. He then told them that they can be free from sin, as we talked about last week. That Satan... Uh, the say that that if they would only trust him and not trust in Satan, which was their father, he went even further in verses forty-two through forty-seven and said, "You don't know God because God's not your daddy." You, these are church leaders that Jesus is talking to. These are not bus kids, church kids. These are not people that are coming in off the street with with tattoos and piercings. These are not people that you look at and say, wow, they're lost. These are church people. These are people that have been in the Word of God all their life. And Jesus says, you're going to die in your sins and go to hell. Can you imagine? Some of us today may not be saved. You can only tell if someone's saved by their fruit. And I can't tell you if you're saved or not. Only God can tell you that. I know of a church right now. Man, I, I won't tell you where it is. But we were talking... And uh, he said that he thought his church was saved and on the way to heaven. <coughs> then last two Sundays ago, they had about 14 people, some of them in his own family. Right. He'd been preaching to for years and years and years. Yep. I'm talking about faithful people. I'm talking about people that knew the word of God, like the back of their hand, yep. come down and actually got saved. They repented of their sins and trusted Christ as their Savior. So there may be some of you in here that have been coming here 30 years and you may think you're saved, but you may not be. I don't know your heart. I'm just preaching where we're at tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. He said, your father is the devil. So much for sweet love that everybody expects Jesus to preach. You know that. Don't judge me. Yeah. Jesus said that he was going straight to hell. He said their daddy was the devil. It don't get more direct than that, does it? I know that ain't Joel Osteen. <laughs> That's Bible preaching. Amen. In the following verses, the Pharisees proved that they were the devil's children by the response that they gave Jesus when he called them out on their sin. And that's usually how you can tell when somebody's saved or not. When you go to them and you point out their sin and you use the word of God to do it and they react out of anger or they react out of, out of bitterness or instead of repenting and they start making excuses, that's how you know somebody, somebody's lost and on the way to hell. I don't know about you, but if I get convicted of my sin right then, I want to repent. Amen. I ain't going to wait. That's how I know I'm saved. As soon as I mess up, God's all over me through the Holy Ghost. Amen. That doesn't happen to you. You need to check up tonight. Amen. I want us to look at the three responses that they gave Jesus when confronted with their sins. And I want to preach for a few minutes on the reactions of the devil's kids. Number one, look with me at verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Now he's confronted them. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Number one, their first response, in their anger, they denounced Jesus' character. You've got God in the flesh standing before you, Convicting you of your sins, and you say, Well, you got the devil in you. <laughs> That's exactly how they respond. You up here preaching, you up here telling them about, you know, you're doing wrong, you need to live right, you need to do right, and their first response is, Well, you're a heathen. That's not how the world reacts. Amen. Now, lost people react. 
You tell them, you ought not to be shacked up. You ought not to be living in sin. You ought not to be doing it. Well, you ain't no better than me. Right. You're just a human just like me. You can't judge me. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly the response that Jesus has got here. He's telling them that they're sinners. They need to make it right. And they say, well, you're the one full of the devil. Mm -hmm. Immediately, they react out of anger. And because of their anger, they start talking about Jesus. They start saying, well, he's not all that. He's not who he claims to be. He must be professing blasphemy. Oh, my, he must be professing blasphemy. I think of the woman at the well. When Jesus pointed out her sins, what did she do? She repented. Nicodemus, when Jesus showed him he was a sinner, what did he do? He repented. You can go on and on and on. They repent or they act in anger. And these are the church leaders of this day acting in anger, saying that Jesus is full of the devil. They'll start to criticize you when you start calling out their sin. They'll say, you're not perfect. Please don't judge me. Boy, that don't that sound familiar. They'll say, you have your life and I have mine. I'm free to live it however I want. It's my body. It's my choice. Right. If it makes me happy, who cares what That's everybody right. else thinks. Right. Yeah. Preaching truth tonight. Amen. Amen. They'll say, you're not a dictator. You can't tell me what to do. You ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy. You're not even God. It's exactly what they said to Jesus. That's right. But yet he was God. Amen. <laughs> he was God. That's how he knew they were living in sin. Yeah. You know, God knows some of you. Amen. Amen. I don't know the secrets of your life, but God does. And he knows exactly where you're at tonight. Right. And he knew exactly where we were going to be at tonight. And I trust him. Amen. I trust him to give us exactly what we need. That's right. That's right. They'll bring up your past and your sins yeah. when you bring up theirs. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you used to be shacked up years ago, don't you? Don't you forget about that. No. You've made it right. You have every right to say something. Amen. As long as it backs up with the word of God. They'll say that because you're judging, that means you're not living for Jesus because a Christian's not supposed to judge. Yeah. They'll say, judge not lest you be judged. And they'll forget all about that part under there that talks about having a beam in your own eye. Making sure that you're right with God before you cast judgment. But yet we're supposed to cast judgment according to the word of God. As we studied a while back. On judgment and judging people. And when it's right and when it's wrong. The Bible tells us that we should make righteous judgments. We should not judge based on the way things look. But based on the facts and the truth at hand. That's what the Bible teaches us. We are to judge. We are to judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right. That's the only way you can tell if someone's saved or not. Is by the fruit that they bear. Mm -hmm. You ought to preach and tell the truth. I actually had someone tell me that because I told him that homosexuality was a sin, that I was going to hell because I was judgmental. But that's totally not true. No. Because you love them, you want to tell them the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like Jesus loved them, he wanted to tell them the truth, that he was God. Now, whether they accept it or not, that's on them. You can't control that. Yeah, but it is our job to share the gospel. And part of the gospel is the fact that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. Amen. That every one of us deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. Right. And that without Jesus Christ, we will die and go to hell. That's the truth of the matter. That's what we ought to share, and that's what we ought to tell. Yes. It's only Amen. by Jesus Christ that we can be saved. They don't want to hear that. Right. When Jesus confronted their sins, y'all believe it or not, remember when we talked about the Samaritan woman? And how Jews did not talk to Samaritans. Okay? So to me, so if a Jew calls someone a Samaritan, that's a racial slur. Right. Okay? Yeah. If you study yeah. that out. Yeah. And what did they say to Jesus? You know what they called him? They called him a Samaritan. <laughs> they said that he was full of the devil. So basically, from that moment on, they called him a racial slur and said that he was full of the devil. Out of anger. Most people, that's the way they react when you deal with their sins. That's how you know they're lost. Mm -hmm. Yep. They started criticizing him just like they do us when we tell others the truth. But notice the response of Jesus. He said, I'm not full of the devil. I'm just doing what my Father has commanded me to do, and that's to stand for what is right. Let me tell you something, friend. If somebody's dissing you because you're telling them the truth, keep on telling them. Right. Jesus didn't <clears throat> back down. I won't back down. I'll stand firm on what we preach behind this pulpit. We'll preach hard against sin. We'll do it out of love, but we're going to preach hard and we're going to let everybody know that sin is what sends people to hell. The sin of rejecting the Holy Spirit, rejecting right. Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, I'm not here to seek glory for myself. 
That's what he said. He said, I'm not here to seek glory for myself. And you're not here to seek glory for yourself. When you go out and tell people about Jesus Christ and you go out and tell them the truth, it ought not to be to, to make you uplifted. It ought not to be to make you happy so that you can have a certain amount of numbers in your Bible written down that you've won so many to Christ. I know some preachers, that's all they talk about is numbers, numbers, numbers. That's not why we share the gospel. I could care less. I, I want it to. But if it, this place never fills up, that's fine with me. I'll preach to what we've got. Amen? Right. I don't base our faith and I don't base what we do here on numbers. If the numbers are high, praise God. If the numbers are low, praise God because He's in control. Amen. As long as we're Amen. preaching like I said this morning, the doctrine from the Word of God, and we're faithful in that, I'm happy. Amen. I'm happy. Because the church doesn't always get full all the time. Right. It should, but it doesn't always. He said, in the end, you'll be judged, but if you follow me, you won't have to die. What Jesus said. He said, he was saying that if they believed on him, they could be saved and able to go to heaven. That's the gospel message that we need to share. No matter if they act out of anger or not. You say, if I put it on Facebook, Lord knows, so and so's going to get mad. They're going to comment on that thing, and they're going to blow my Facebook up. Put it on there anyway. Put it on there anyway. Offend them. Tell them the truth. Out of love. Out of love. If it's the truth and it offends them, oh well, let them get angry. Right. Let them get mad. Yep. As long as it's doctrine and it's come from the Word of God, <clears throat> let them be angry with you. I would much rather someone be angry with me and die and go to hell than someone be happy with me and die and go to hell. If I tell them the truth, how they react, that's their business, but I'm going to tell them. Number right. two, I said number one, in their anger... They discredited Jesus' character. And that's what the world does. When you speak out against sin, they're going to discredit you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to talk about your past. They're going to bring up all this other stuff instead of just dealing with their sin. And any time you deal with somebody in sin, that's usually the way that they react if they're not right with God. Right. I'm giving you good verse by verse Bible study tonight. Number two. Look at verse number 52. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Now they said, Now that you've said that, we know you're full of the devil. <laughs> Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? Are you greater than all the past preachers? And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to, to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Number two, in their unbelief, okay, they were angry, and now because of their anger it's led to unbelief. In their unbelief, they disputed Jesus' superiority. They said, you're not God. Because they didn't believe that he was God. So now they're angry at him because he's calling out their sin. And then now they're not believing. And being unbelieving, they disputed who he was. And they said he was not who he claimed to be. Their next response was not one of believing who he said he was. They said, now we know you're full of the devil. Because not only are you calling us, you're calling everybody out. you got to be full of the devil. <laughs> They asked him if he was better than Abraham or the prophets before him. They had no idea who they were talking to. Let me tell you something, friend. When he convicts you, you need to repent right then. Because that Amen. repentance, the longer you put it off, the longer you say no, the longer you say no to God, the more unbelief comes into you. And the more it's easier for you to keep turning away from it. You keep telling yourself something, eventually you're going to believe it. Right. If I looked at myself in the mirror long enough and I said, man, I look good bald-headed. <laughs> I, I did that every day for the next 10 years. Eventually, I believed myself. Yeah. Yeah. You keep telling yourself something, eventually you're going to believe it. That's right. More and more people tell you something, you're going to believe it. That's why you ought to watch who you hang around. Amen. Your friends will tell you, it's okay to live the way you're living. Right. It don't yeah. bother nobody. It yep. don't bother God. God doesn't judge. Right. God's happy with you just the way you are. Yep. Mm -hmm. You say, ah, 
People tell you that long enough, you'll believe it. Yep. Amen. The Word of God tells us different. Mm -hmm. They asked him if he was better than Abraham or the prophets before them. They had no idea who they were talking to. They were talking to the greatest man that ever walked the face of this earth. Amen. They were talking to the Jesus who made Adam out of the dust of the ground. Right. Yet they claimed he wasn't God. They were talking to the one who created Eve out of the rib of that same man. Yep. But yet they said he wasn't God. They were talking to the one that helped Elijah when he prayed fire out of heaven. Yet they said that he wasn't the same God. They were the one, the one that helped Moses part the Red Sea. But yet they said he wasn't God. It was the one that's been there from the beginning that will be there in the end to judge and rule and reign. They were talking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and face to face said he's not God. You're here tonight living in sin, openly, not caring. God's judged you. God's cast judgment on you. You've not repented. It doesn't bother you. You sure you're saved? You sure you're saved? You sure that you serve the same Jesus that dealt with the woman at the well for her adultery and living in sin? You sure that you serve the same Jesus that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served when they wouldn't even eat of certain foods because God did not want them to eat it? And because of that, they were thrown into a, 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 a fire, a furnace? Daniel wouldn't eat the meat that was given to him, and because of that, he was thrown and he wanted to pray? Are you sure that you're serving the same one that helped those? They were talking to the same one that was with Daniel in the lion's den. They were talking to the same one that supplied the ram as a sacrifice instead of Isaac. They were talking to the same one that would sacrifice himself. Give the ultimate sacrifice to show them how bad their sin was. To show them that it's bad enough that he would go and bleed and die and take a beating and take a crown of thorns and take flesh ripped from his back and from his body. To show them how much he hated sin. To show them how much sin could not enter into the gates of heaven. Are you sure that's the same one you're serving? If you can openly live in sin and it not bother you, I'm afraid that you're lost tonight. Right. Yeah. In fact, there's never been anyone like him that would love humanity so much that he would die for it. To take away our sin. If he died to take away our sin, you think he's happy with us openly living in it? Absolutely not. I'm preaching truth tonight. Amen. Preaching the word of God tonight. Taking it right out of the word of God. And talking to the devil's kids tonight. Number three. And we're done. Look with me at verse number 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. And so passed by. They were so angry with him. Okay. In their hard heartedness. He's convicted them of their sins. So it started with anger. And said you're not going to tell me what to do. You ain't, you ain't, I'm, I'm my God. My body my choice. And then from that anger it went to unbelief. Well he can't be God. God wouldn't judge me. God would, I don't believe he's God. God wouldn't throw people in hell. God would not do that. And from that unbelief, it turned into hard-heartedness. They determined that Jesus was worthy of death. They determined in their heart that he was not worthy to live. They did that. They asked him if he was not even 50 years old, yet how did he know where Abraham was? Because he's always been. <laughs> That's how he knows. Because he's God Almighty. Because he can judge us because of who he is. Because he's righteous. Because he's holy. Because he is the one just true God. Amen. Amen. That's why he can judge us. That's why he can call us out on our sin. He said before Abraham was. I was already there. I'm so glad we serve a God that has been and always will be. Amen. Amen. No matter if you believe it or not. No matter if you take him for who he is or not, he is who he says he is because the word of God says so. Amen. Amen. By this time, they've reached the decision that they're going to kill him because they chose not to believe what he was telling them. It was not time for him to die, though. So he was able to slip away and get through the crowd and push past them. Once you've reached the point of a hard heart where you don't care what the word of God says, you don't care what the preacher says, you don't care what the church says. You don't care what your friends say. Once you've reached that point, you 
you better make sure. You better make sure that you're saved. Amen. Yeah. Somebody comes to me and tells me I'm living in sin, I automatically want to check up. Somebody comes to me and shows me the Word of God and says, this is what it says. And if my, my first response is, well, that's not the way I feel that it says it. Yeah. When it's clearly stating right. what it says. Mm -hmm. Bible says that there's not multiple interpretations. There's one. One interpretation. Right. You've got to take the Word of God. You've got to study it from when it was written. Every verse in that book can be taken out of context. Amen. If you really wanted to be honest, I could take one verse that says um, Judas went and hung himself and then take you to another verse that says go and do you likewise. Uh, and right. I could start a whole cult with all of us going to hang ourselves. Yeah. But if you study that in context, you know the difference. Uh. Once you've reached the point of a hard heart where you don't care, you're done. Yep. So many people today I don't care what the preacher says. Mm -hmm. He can preach to me till he's blue in the face. I'm going to do what I want to do. I understand if it's what the preacher says. I'm preaching thus saith the word of God. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not preaching what Pastor David thinks. I'm not preaching what so and so thinks. I'm giving you straight from the word of God. Everything that I preach comes out of the word of God. Don't be like these men. God wants you to follow him. And if you reject him, then you will refuse his sacrifice on the cross as if to leave him there to die in vain. As he said, we said they're ready to kill him. When you reject Jesus, you say, I'm going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what the preacher says. I don't care what the church says. I don't care what the deacon say. I don't care what mama says. I don't care what daddy says. I don't care what the word of God says. When you get to that point, you say, I'm going to do what I want to do. You're on your way headed straight to hell. Because you can't possibly not care and be saved. Right. When you get saved, behold, all things become new. Yep. Not just some things. Yep. yep. Not just half the things. Right. And I understand it is a process. When you get saved, you gradually grow closer and closer to the Lord. But there is a big change in that moment that you get saved to the next day of living. Yep. Amen. In closing, I'll let you out about five minutes early tonight. Maybe not, because we'll have an altar call. That might take five minutes. If you're saved, don't hate those that choose to reject you or your God. It's so easy for us, when they reject us, to get angry and say, I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. Yep. They're angry at me because I told them the truth, so I'm never going to tell them the truth again. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get to that point where you're that hard-hearted. And you don't want to tell somebody the truth. Right. If every one of you in here got mad at me and told me you didn't want to hear me preach again, unless you vote me out of here, I'll still be here preaching. Amen. No matter if every one of you get mad at me all at the same time because I'm preaching the word of God. Amen. Doesn't matter who's angry, you keep telling them. Doesn't matter if they want to hear it, you keep telling them. Doesn't matter if they storm off and they say, I don't want to hear it, you keep telling them. Because that's what Jesus does with us every Single day. Love them anyway. We will suffer persecution just like Jesus Christ did. If you're lost today, turn to Jesus. He's the only one that can clean up your past and put you on the right path. Y'all stand up. April, you come play for us.